The new wave of traditional heavy metal, or NWOTHM, was a metal movement that started in the early 2000s. This movement was the next generation's take on the classic or traditional heavy metal sound of the late 70s and early 80s, a sound and style that faded into obscurity, mainly because of the rise of hair and pop metal during the second half of the 80s, but also due to the growth of extreme metal and all the new genres like groove, industrial and new metal. But towards the tail end of the 90s and early 2000s, we saw an increased interest for old school metal. And the reason for this has a lot to do with the fact that several of the classic bands reunited with their estranged vocalists. Ozzy Osbourne with Black Sabbath in 1997, Bruce Dickinson with Iron Maiden in 1999, and Rob Halford with Judas Priest in 2003. At the same time, heavy metal festivals like Wacken and Sweden Rock Festival grew in popularity. But the bands that headlined most of these rock and metal festivals were almost exclusively the flavor of the month, or reunited nostalgia acts of the 70s and 80s. There was no regrowth to speak of, no new bands that played classic heavy metal, at least not successfully. But at the same time there was an ever increasing amount of younger heavy metal fans that had grown up on a steady dose of Priest, Saxon and Maiden. So there was a hunger for something else, for something that got lost during the 90s. The distorted guitars, the solos, the power screens, the hard riffs, the fashion, the image and the attitude of the classic late 70s and early 80s metal. And the answer to the starving fans was the new wave of traditional heavy metal. I am Olaf Wickstrand and I play in Enforcer. Enforcer was formed sometime in 2005 um, with the goal kind of to take back what was lost during the 90s, take back real metal and make it as big as possible. Uh, I've been in playing in different thrash and death metal bands for a couple of years before, but um, and we used to do covers of bands such as Exciter, Venom, you know, basic stuff like that. And kind of always felt that it was so much more energetic for the live shows once we got into that, those kind of songs. Uh, so I started to experiment with this idea that I, that I had somehow and, and made, this, uh, made a bunch of songs in this style to put on the internet. At that time, it was like absolutely no one in the world doing it like we did or as old school as I wanted to, to have my music. I became completely obsessed with heavy metal from the 80s and doing it the real way, the way I wanted to hear music myself. Um, I put out the songs on MySpace at that time where I got where I quickly got quite good reputation or I got a lot of views kind of quickly, it kind of grew. So uh, I got a lot of confirmation from MySpace at that time and I managed to spread the songs quite well. Um, and after getting those, like the, that type of confirmation, we were instantly approached by record labels, showmakers or promoters or what, whatever to, to make this, uh, make this project real but at that time it was only me and the band so I put together a band together with with my brother and some some friends from other bands I had since before that, that liked the idea at that time I also got in contact with guys from from different bands who were just starting up um, I met guys from Helvetet's Port, Portrait, In Solitude or what was later becoming these bands um, all over, mostly Sweden at that time. Um, and we started to network, we started to hang out a lot, we showed each other a lot of new bands, and there was just like such an extreme creative but old school environment to, to, to develop this kind of bubble that started to happen. And then I got in touch with other people across the 
the world who were doing similar things, for example, guys from Cauldron or Goathorn, who were, who, who were kind of, people were talking about that time. So we started to like exchange a lot of ideas about traditional metal and we, we, I think we grew something at that time. Hey, JJ Tartaglia here, drummer for Skullfist and uh, also lead vocalist and drummer, of course, for uh, my new band, Thunderer. Um, yeah, Skullfist uh, has been around for over 10 years now, uh, even longer than that, if you uh, count like the early years when Zach was still uh, looking for permanent members and all that. Um, but yeah, I, um, I rolled on to the scene uh, a bit later, so uh, came around in 2014. And uh, yeah, since then we've done uh, loads of tourings and uh, put out uh, three albums so far in total. Uh, new one's coming out soon. I'm Jarvis Leatherby from the heavy metal band Night Demon. Night Demon is from Ventura, California, a small beach town about 60 miles north of Los Angeles. We started in 2011, basically just a few friends that loved the new wave of British heavy metal sound. We really had no other reference around us in town when it came to anything metal. The band Sirith Ungle had come from Ventura, but they were long gone by that point. They had broken up for decades and everything around us was just hardcore punk. And that's the stuff that also influenced us, but we had a love for the old new wave of British heavy metal sound and just traditional heavy metal in general. But we were kind of marooned on this island, so to speak, and there, there wasn't anything culturally happening heavy metal wise around us. So it was, just, it was just us and our very small, small group of friends that just wanted to play heavy metal together. I'm Dan from Stryker. Uh, lead singer of the band. Um, Stryker's been around since 2007. And we started as a band because me and our original guitar player, Ian, wanted to make a band that was just like the band Racer X, which is an 80s band. I mean, anybody watching this probably knows who Racer X is, but uh, that was our original idea for the band. And uh, it didn't turn out that way, but because uh, we had a lot of other influences, but uh, that's where we started. And Stryker has turned into uh, sort of a collaboration of all kinds of different traditional metals jammed together into one thing. We are Riot City from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm Kale. This is Rolden and Dustin. I got into metal, you know, being a young kid and Actually, my uncle's band was playing a Battle of the Bands thing, and they were kind of a hardcore band. And I went and watched them, and there was another band playing that was a heavy metal band, and that's kind of how I was like, wow, it's really cool, like aggressive and powerful all at the same time. I want to do that. So then I started to play music, and the rest is history. My name's John Leon, and I play in the band White Wizard. We are a traditional heavy metal band. Uh, obvious influences, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Rush, Scorpions, all the new album stuff, a um, little bit of the early thrash stuff. That's the, the music, the heavy metal that I got into at a very young age that uh, has always stayed with me. It's got a certain power to it when you mix great vocals, great songwriting, uh, great melody. There's, uh, there's only so uh, many bands out there that do it great, and I wanted to kind of take on the challenge of trying to make a band in the modern age that could do that. And uh, we've done about five records worldwide that I'm super proud of, and we're still going, trying to continue to uh, fly the flag for traditional metal. We are the band Portrait. We started out in 2006 and released a demo tape called Welcome to My Funeral. Before that, we had other bands. We've been playing since the late 90s, maybe 98 or 99. And it took a couple of years before we started our portrait. And then, like I said, we did a demo tape. We did Into the Nothingness, like 
a single version before we released our first album in 2007. Yeah, and before we started the band, we had different uh, other bands going, mostly in uh, the black thrash uh, metal style. But we um, we felt that um, our uh, hearts were with heavy metal, but we never thought it was possible to start such band because um, uh, it was so hard to find anyone who could sing. Uh, heavy metal in a decent or good way and then we discovered that our uh, common friend Philip uh, could actually sing and we just uh, went for it basically wrote some songs and then just decided to um, yeah to play traditional heavy metal uh, with um, uh, with some darkness added to it, so we ended up with heavy metal darkness. <laughs> Who are you? Well, uh, in 1999 I had a two-man band called Brute Force, and back then we used to play a couple of songs which later became Helvetets Pork songs, and Helvetets Pork, that is us, we are Helvetets Pork. And, uh, uh, the name started around 2001, and then two years later, I, I found this man uh, at the, my utmost left here, O Thunder. Uh, and during the course of several years, we got more and more members, all the way up until 2015, when we finally became a five-piece band, thanks to this gentleman. And then we had one member change in 2018, I think, when this man joined the group. Earthquake is his name. Yep. And, uh, well, as for our style, we, we play an old style of music, we aim for an old sound, because I think that is objectively the absolute best sound. And as for the songs themselves, um, I can't say that we're trying to emulate something from the past, really, because all our influences are old, and I, for one, uh, have hardly even heard any records from the 21st century, so it kind of naturally becomes quite an old sounding music, also song wise. And when we're talking about traditional metal or classic metal, all the pieces of the puzzle fell in place with Judas Priest during the second half of the 70s. They built upon the sound of Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and Deep Purple, and thus laid the groundwork for heavy metal. And then came Motorhead and the new wave of British heavy metal with everyone from Iron Maiden to Saxon and Angel Witch. And in just a few years into the 80s, more or less every developed nation had a metal scene of their own, before thrash and glam metal became popular during the second half of the 80s. So I would say that bands like Judas Priest, Saxon, Iron Maiden and Accept were some of the bands that played a very classic style of heavy metal. And it's bands like them that inspired the new wave of traditional heavy metal wave. But let's see what the bands themselves has to say about it. I don't see it as we're playing traditional metal. I'm, I kind of have a very orthodox view on this. I just think that we play metal. Whatever was popular in the 90s with like, like uh, rapping angry guy vocals and stuff like that, I don't even see that type of music as metal, if you ask me. Uh, metal is the definition of metal are bands such as Venom, Exciter, Iron Maiden, but also back to Rainbow, Black Sabbath, and, and like I can see the line between Sabbath, Zeppelin, Purple, Rainbow, going over in the 80s with Iron Maiden, Metallica, and then into the extreme metal scene. I kind of see that as the metal. The, the metal in the 90s, where it died commercially, continued in the extreme metal scene, in the death metal scene, and in, in the black metal scene, but what was commercial in the 90s, I consider something that was taken a, like a, a, a going away from what I think is metal. So everything there is metal. 
And I think that we are into that. I'm sort of inspired by all kinds of metal, not only traditional metal, but that's where I would like to put my musical focus, I guess. It's nostalgic in a sense that it takes from um, the emotions and, and the feelings of the 80s, but uh, is kind of uh, wrapping it up into something new and pr presenting it in, in a more modern way. But uh, yeah, it's it's really become a style. I mean, uh, just like you know, dual guitars, clean vocals, uh, big drums. So yeah, that's that's the sound of traditional Same. metal. Judas Priest is probably the first traditional metal band in my mind um, because they were around after the big three, after the Sabbath, Purple Zeppelin thing and, and before the new wave of British heavy metal. I would probably put Motorhead in there too, but I would just think that they're more of a straight rock and roll band and, and more even on the punk side, ethic wise. So traditional metal, I would really go to Judas Priest first. If you want to look at, you know, Sad Wings of Destiny and, uh, you know, the couple of records that came after that, Sin After Sin, Stained Class, that's really, I think, the birth of what we would call traditional metal. Traditional heavy metal is, I think, um, kind of the hardest in the genre to pull off. That's why there's so many few bands that pull it off well. You have to have an incredible singer, someone that can hit a lot of notes, that has a lot of melodic range, um, that also has power to uh, you know, be able to be heard and felt above a two guitar attack with huge drums and bass coming at you, you know, like a freight train. So there's very few singers that can really do that and do it well. Uh, from, from, you know, how much room you have to expand in the genre, I think we have always embraced kind of like the band Rush um, to take chances. We're not always just traditional heavy metal, but it's at our roots and it's a big part of our roots. And I think that's all that really matters. I think that there's always room to grow for every band. And some bands might just stay with one formula um, and that's fine. You know, you've got your bands like ACDC, Iron Maiden, uh, Slayer. They've always kind of stayed in a formula and it, it really works for them. Or you can take chances like Rush, Judas Priest, or Metallica. Um, sometimes they get a lot of hate for that, but at the same time, they expand their, their palette and they bring something different to the table. But they're still metal bands. They still come from that same spirit that uh, traditional heavy metal is. And I think it's, it's really easy to put labels on things, but I think there's a lot of cross-pollination in the metal genre. For all the genres that seem to exist, and there's so many sub-genres and so many opinions, there's so much cross-pollination within those genres. And I think it's just about having an open mind, both as a musician and a fan. And, and some bands have more open minds, some fans have more open minds, some don't. But at the end of the day, it's all heavy metal, man. Yeah, well, our relation to the term traditional metal is not uh, really, uh, we're not too familiar with the term, but we can say that when we started out, we uh, tried to do similar things as uh, the bands, the classic bands that we uh, like, like Judas Priest and Iron Maiden, Dio and so on, Merciful Fate. And uh, that was the main inspirations, but with time, uh, we have grown into something uh, of our own and uh, what inspires us is to um, uh, to develop and evolve as a band and to develop our own sound and our own style and that is what has been most important uh, over these uh, 15 years so far. Um, well, my own definition, I think, would be a bit narrower than what is generally accepted. I, I see it as straight up classic heavy metal, like not thrash or speed or overt power metal. And like the name of this movement, so to speak, is the new wave of traditional heavy metal. And yeah, that is one thing that is pretty descriptive, but I would not call a band that is from the 80s traditional metal, then I would prefer the term heavy metal or like classic or regular heavy metal, which is what I would prefer anyway. I, I call us like classic heavy metal. And also 
Um, I wouldn't, even if I might sound a bit narrow now, I don't think that is the case at all because like I've been listening to classic heavy metal and mostly only obscure heavy metal for like 20 years now or more and I still have not like barely gotten to the middle of it I guess and when it comes to creating that music yourself we have barely scratched the surface of it because I think it's so multifaceted that you don't at all have to think that you've locked yourself into like a, a narrow path. So what separates the new wave of traditional heavy metal bands from the old heavy metal bands of the 80s? Well, time changes everything and new trends come and go. And everything from fashion to studio techniques to how the logos and artworks are made has changed to some degree over the decades. Plus they didn't have internet back in the 80s and people bought physical media instead of streaming the music. And even if the new wave of traditional heavy metal bands play a style that had its popularity peak some 40 years ago, I still think that you can, at least in most cases, still hear if an album came out in 1981 or if it came out in 2021. So I don't think that this is a way where everything is frozen in time. But let's see what the bands themselves has to say about it. I don't think there's any difference whatsoever between bands in the 80s and bands now. I mean, if you take Iron Maiden as an example, I usually take Iron Maiden as an example because, because yeah. And uh, I mean, they were inspired by certain music and they did their interpretation of it. And I think we do the same thing. It's just like we are not inspired by new bands. We just exclude all the new bands, but we are inspired by the old bands, but we do our thing. And my goal is not to create generic music that are made just to sound like the old bands. My idea is to go f take the entire metal genre forward inspired by these bands. So I don't think there's a, much, a huge difference between bands in the 80s and bands now. I think that I feel that I can do whatever I want with it, but with the foundation of being inspired by traditional metal. I think stylistically there's probably not like a huge difference between uh, you know the bands traditional metal bands nowadays compared to the 80s like you you still need to have all those those elements uh, that I mentioned uh, like um, you know vo vocal harmonies and uh, clean vocals high high pitched vocals um, dual guitars like virtuoso style uh, guitar playing and uh, double kicks, of course, heavy drums, heavy bass. Um, yeah, that's, that's the sound of, uh, of traditional metal. Uh, I, I think the production is, is a big difference. It's much better, although some bands choose to uh, uh, go the uh, more bare bones route with uh, the, the production. I guess that's more true. Um, but... Uh, I think, uh, in my opinion, the, I mean, the musicians were better back in the 80s, too. So you've got that element of it. I think uh, today's production has kind of made bands uh, a little bit lazy. I mean, people aren't practicing as much. Like, there's not, especially when you're recording, there's not that uh, aim for perfection and to r really get perfect takes. Uh, uh, a lot of bands lean on on production and recording tricks and things like that. So uh, maybe that's why the bands from the '80s sound better. The big difference is that when you're a band in the new wave of traditional heavy metal, maybe trying to recreate something that already happened 20, 30, 40 years before you, you can't help the fact that you've grown up your whole life listening to music that came after that. So some of that has to seep in. And I know that it happened with Night Demon. Our initial goal was to be a new wave of British heavy metal sounding band. I think we accomplished that. There was, when we first came out, we, had, we hadn't played any gigs and 
people overseas actually thought that we were a lost gem from the early 80s or the late 70s and they didn't know that we were a new band that was a big compliment to us however if you listen to that first ep there are some parts that you know maybe some speed picking parts that weren't even the you know that technique had not really come to light at the time that you know music like this was coming out so again we couldn't help but be influenced that the thrash scene happened during our lifetime um you know new metal happened death metal happened alternative rock happened all these things happened so just having the knowledge of 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 those different subgenres and those styles of metal you already know the capabilities so it's a lot different recreating a certain sound and we don't think of ourselves as recreating it we are just it's in our dna we're influenced by this stuff by the stuff that we like and we just like to play music that we like and i think most new wave of traditional heavy metal bands will tell you exactly the same it's it's not it's not a, a copycat thing musically yeah so as far as uh the difference between the new bands and and the old bands um i think the biggest part about it is like it was new when those bands were doing it like it was like sort of on on the cutting edge and like they were sort of exploring new territory and then like, i don't think it's been like evolving the sound i think what's been evolving is like the production values um there's a lot of old records that just didn't get the justice they deserved so the difference between the 80s bands and the new wave of traditional heavy metal bands of now um i think in the as far as the industry goes there's a huge difference because in the 80s there was so much money being generated there was a big push there was major labels behind everything there was mtv of course um you could get away with a lot you know ozzy could snort ants and you know wake up in his own puke and you know it, you know it, the bands were babysitted, you know, they had managers and people on the road and there was so much money being generated that you kind of could get away with a lot. Um, whereas now you can't really, you can't really do that. You know, you, um, you have to kind of, you, you have to do it out of a labor of love because there's not a lot of money being generated anymore in this genre. Um, a lot of the labels are outposts now. They're not really uh, what they were before. Legal downloading changed everything. There's not a lot of revenues coming in. So a lot of the bands that do that sound now, they're doing it out of uh, complete love for the music because when, when we all go on the road, it's, it's a grind. There's not a lot of money being made. We all have to have a lot of pans in the fire when we get off the road to survive. Um, but in a way that's really cool because it makes it not pretentious. You know, it's, you know, that we're all doing it because we love it. There's no other reason we're doing it. Every band in this genre, um, or even closely related to this genre, um, that's come out in the last 10 or 15 years is doing it strictly because they love it so much. And, uh, that's what keeps me going. All these bands in the genre influence me and, and, and I hope vice versa. And, uh, I hope we all continue to make great uh, traditional heavy metal as long as we can. What is the difference between bands of the 80s and the Nuotum? The main difference is sound production. Because modern production standards suck. And it's all because that the, uh, the people who are effectively mastering and mixing uh, the new records by new bands are uh, prone to be against every type of, uh, yeah, type of pr pr use of production dynamics yeah production dynamics yeah. that isn't maximum two years old mm. so uh, even though all the bands they use old gear they use uh, they use everything that they used in the 80s they play the kind of same kind of music but they just can't the mixing and mastering and the production people suck ass <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree regarding the sound and I believe that one other key difference is that like the bands in the 80s they didn't really have a, any distance to what they were doing. They were like living in the moment and they had to hang on for dear life and that also shone through in the music yeah. um, because like we nowadays we can kind of kick back and 
do whatever we want and like time time moves very slowly now like one year in the 80s equals maybe five or ten years now yeah. so that is the, the eagerness is a difference and i mean the band in the 80s didn't try to sound old a lot of bands now try so hard to sound old yeah and i yeah. don't know if you should try to sound old or sound good and the economic situation is obviously a big difference because the audience is a and the record sales are massively different so the the economic situation for every band uh, they had much bigger the yeah, budgets in the 80s could do much more uh, i think as well that people were like uh, the sound guys like martin birch and stuff like that in the 80s they tried they experimented a lot yeah. and it was a very limited art form in a way as well so they m did the most with what little they had and uh, well now it's so easy to record an album you just sit at home in front of your computer and i mean you can it's perfectly possible to create an 80 sounding record with the tools that you have today but again nobody does it so fuck you in the early 2000s there was mainly three scenes where old school sounding heavy metal started to take hold and it wouldn't be stretched to say that the new wave of traditional heavy metal had its roots in the swedish scene where bands like enforcer helvetes port in solitude portrait ram and bullet tail from and a lot of the Swedish bands started to release their first demos, singles and albums around 2005. And two or three years later, we started to see the same thing happening in Canada, with bands like Gotorn slash Cauldron, Striker and Skullfist. And then it spread down to the United States in the early 2010s, with bands like Night Demon, Haunt, Visigoth and Eternal Champion, to name a few. And in the 2010s, traditional sounding heavy metal spread to other European countries, Asia, Australia and South America as well. I'm just... I, I guess I'm just, you know, I'm conservative when it comes to most not, maybe not politically, but I'm conservative when it comes to most kind of culture. You know, the, there's nothing you can compare to um, as the feelings you had when you were a child growing up with heavy metal music. And, you know, the, those, those kind of feelings is something that you chase all the way. And I'm kind of a purist in all types of way. Things that I do, I want to do them 100%. So I felt already in the 90s that even though I wasn't very old then, but it was definitely not what I what I was grown up to with, with the 80s bands. So it was very natural for me to already then become like almost like an enemy to modern metal. And I've just been holding on to that for the majority of my life. I've been, I mean, heavy metal from the 80s made such an extreme impact on me as a child. And I just chased that feeling for my entire life. Well, at around the year 2000, regular heavy metal pretty much didn't exist. Like there were no current bands playing it. And I felt like, like there was this gaping hole that just needed to be filled. So, I mean, even if I wasn't the best musician or vocalist in the world, I just wanted to do it so badly because it, I couldn't understand why people, like there were friends or, and other people who liked classic heavy metal but none of them played it themselves they always played in like black and thrash metal bands and I couldn't really understand why um, and I guess it's also maybe easy for someone who is just starting out to play maybe a noisier form of music so well I guess we went in the deep end straight away w when when I was a youngster I was fortunate enough to start Night Demon when I was 30 years old. Now, rock used to be a really like a young man's game. And back in the day, pre-internet, it was all about who's the hot new young band. 
Um, and if you were anywhere age 30 or older, you were pretty much over the hill and people didn't care about that. They wanted fresh new blood for the kids. Well, now that young people aren't really listening to rock music, the ones that do really appreciate older guys going up there and doing it. I still feel pretty young. I don't think, I mean, there's, there's many bands that are 30, 40 years older than me that are still doing it at a, at a high level. So that really gives us some hope for the future too. Yeah, and I think the thing that most of us in the band have in common is that we all come from pretty isolated uh, areas around the country and we uh, you're not very prone to influence from the uh, mainstream world so to speak it's more you know, important that you find your own little niche of things and your own hobbies and interests and uh, if music becomes one of them you always start to explore what's going on and uh, I think we were lucky in that we, we were very uh, most of us were very isolated from during the early 2000s uh, type of music and we always experimented a bit but it always led to the classic f art form of heavy metal. Our own little Swedish version of growing up near the pounding steel mills and <laughs> the yeah. rough factory areas. <laughs> Toilet yeah. factory yeah. areas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we, I, I think as Swedes we got some kind of melancholy within us that comes through in the music I would say <laughs> and one thing I find funny is that I mentioned earlier about most people playing death or black or thrash metal like 20 years ago maybe that's still the case but for some reason in the mind of the general populace death metal is still somehow the definition of metal when you say to someone that you play in a metal band, they immediately go, oh, is that that? <laughs> and you have to explain over and over again. And of course, it could be the other way around that when you say that you play metal, someone might say, oh, well, shouldn't you be in the Melody Festival and the, you know, the big uh, Eurovision, song, Eurovision con yeah. song contest like Lordi or, and so, yeah, people don't really have a grasp of what regular classic heavy metal is and that's also a driving force to play it as truly as possible to really get the message across and show people that this is the best music in the world i, I mean i've done other styles too as a drummer like I, i've done death metal uh, symphonic metal uh, new metal back in the new metal days right um all kinds of stuff uh but i think even through all of that um, my heart was always uh, with uh, uh, traditional heavy metal because that, that's what I've been listening to the whole time, you know. And uh, even though the other bands I was in or whatever, like, kind of make fun of me, like, oh, yeah, you're listening to this stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, but it, you listen to uh, to what you're drawn to, right? So I've, I've always been drawn to that style, you know, from the, the classics, you know, the stuff from the 80s, uh, like, uh, mid to late 80s is, is my favorite is uh, my favorite production I feel like I feel like production peaked in uh, 1986 <laughs> and then from then on it's just been going down but yeah it's something um, about bands and recordings during those years or just uh, have a feeling that uh, um, has you know it's we're trying to get it back but I don't think it's it's ever been how it was back then. So, I mean, hopefully, hopefully we can get there again. When we started out, the style heavy metal was on the mainstream scene. It was something that belonged to the past. Uh, but once we started out and we found our singer and uh, realized that we could play and write songs in that style, we became very inspired to continue with that because we felt that we had something to add and uh, that uh, everything about heavy metal was not done yet but we had something to add to its legacy and to uh, to help and develop uh, the genre as a whole i think it, for many people it was more difficult to start a traditional heavy metal band back then 
because they it was harder to find other people that wanted to do that. The more bands there are, the easier it is to find other musicians that want to do the same thing. So what about the influences? Where does the bands of the new wave draw their inspiration? My main influence is to play this type of music is kind of the music that I'm grown up with. Growing up with bands such as Iron Maiden, Venom, Metallica, Exciter, whatsoever, you know, just that, that was kind of the, the idea in the first place to do that kind of meets new wave of British heavy metal meets a lot of Swedish, like more melodic type of heavy metal that I was very inspired by in the beginning to like create the foundation of, uh, of, of this band. Uh, my influences uh, as a kid, uh, growing up still learning and everything was uh, of course a lot, of, a lot of bands, a lot of musicians. Um, I really got into uh, ACDC. Uh, at a young age that uh, I think that was the game changer for me. I was, I was still such a little kid, but uh, it made me latch on to, um, to heavy music, to hard music, and, and never let it go. My, uh, my brother, my younger brother, was uh, uh, really into Motley Crue. Um, so we kind of had like, we each had our bands, you know, like I would listen to Poison or ACDC and then he was into Motley Crue. And, uh, yeah, I had a uh, poison uh, uh, ball cap that my my parents got for me. So yeah, I was uh, pretty into it <laughs> from the start. The main influences for myself and for Night Demon just basically go back to your cliche heavy metal themes, I would suppose. Horror movies, not so much on the fantasy side of things. We're not the kind of epic band. We're more of like a street band. I think that's where the the punk rock stuff that we grew up around came in and kind of melded with the metal that we were doing. It also taught us a lot about the, the DIY ethic of it all. So all of those themes with the darker side of life, the darker imagery, the horror stuff meets heavy metal and rock and roll kind of was really part of the DNA of the band. A lot of the uh, 80s horror movies, 80s horror culture, and especially the 80s metal horror movies that, that came out around that day, um, Halloween, Trick or Treat, Black Roses, stuff like that. And just heavy metal seemed to have the theme, heavy metal seemed to be the soundtrack of of the, the, the great horror movies of the 80s. So I think all that tied hand in hand and that's really where we got a lot of our inspiration from. So uh, when, when uh, the band started, we were heavily influenced by 80s metal, um, from like traditional metal to speed metal to hair metal and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't, for whatever reason, we were always super interested in that. I, I couldn't even tell you why really it wasn't like the popular thing going on at the time but it was like this i don't know it's like watching cult classic horror movies or something like that it was just some charm to it and... so as far as influences you know obviously when i formed white wizard i had kind of you know come full circle to all of the influences that made me be a musician in the first place you know i used to sit in my uh, parents' house late at night after they would fall asleep. And I had this VHS recording of Live After Death by Iron Maiden. And I would just sneak whiskey or brandy out of my dad's liquor cabinet you know, <laughs> and watch, watch Live After Death over and over and over again. I was obsessed with it. And uh, it made me want to be a bass player. That's why I got a bass was because of Steve Harris and, of course, Getty Lee from Rush. I would put on the Hemispheres album by Rush and air bass in my living room in the morning in between my bong hits and Captain Crunch before high school, you know, <laughs> trying to trying to master the air bass of Getty Lee. 
And uh, that was really what got me started was, was bands like Rush and Maiden. And then, of course, it grew from there. You know, you go, you hang out in the record store as a kid and you start uh, buying vinyl. You know, I was getting Judas Priest records and, and then you get into the new album stuff and the obscure stuff. And, uh, of course, the 70s stuff like Uli John Roth Scorpions and UFO. And, and it all just kind of comes together and becomes kind of a a lifestyle and and in my early years in my junior high and early high school days that's what got me through all that stuff you know all the problems at home all the craziness of life it was empowering it was uplifting it made me feel uh like uh you know, like I had a purpose, a reason to keep going and living beyond just the mundane aspects of school and what society says you need to be. I was kind of rebellious as a kid in the first place. So those influences, they really, really had an effect on me. And um, as I moved forward in life, you know, a lot of things happen. Um, you know, all of a sudden the heavy metal genre changed, right? You had all of a sudden, uh, you know, Bruce Dickinson quit Iron Maiden. Uh, Rob Halford quit Judas Priest. Ozzy put out Mama, I'm Coming Home. I mean, what the heck was that? You know, uh, <laughs> you you had all these uh, things happen. Metallica and Queensryche kind of sold out and did records that uh, made them a lot of money, but really didn't have any thought-provoking lyrics anymore. And then all of a sudden, grunge was there and Eddie Vedder 24 hours a day. And you're going, what the hell happened here? And when that happened... I kind of got out of metal for a while. I kind of started to drift into other genres and, and world music and all these different things. And then uh, what got me back into heavy metal and really started to light that fire of my influences and why I became a musician was uh, was when Uli John Roth started coming on tour in the early 2000s in Los Angeles. And I, I would go see him and he would play those old Scorpion songs. And it just... I went and got those old Scorpions records out like in trance and all those those different awesome albums and uh, and started rediscovering my love for the genre. And um, then I went to a Heaven and Hell concert when when Dio got back with Sabbath and it was kind of I was off to the races at that point. I was playing in some bands I wasn't really happy with. And I said, you know what, I uh, I need to do something. I want to make the band that I want to make in the spirit of those bands. But for the modern age, it wasn't really popular at the time. That wasn't anything anyone was doing in Los Angeles. That's for sure. And I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on in Europe. But. Um, I just did it out of the love for doing it. It was all about the music. And I think that's exemplified in the first EP and beyond um, in what we do. And it still continues to be. We love it. We love that kind of music. And uh, we just love playing it and writing it, recording it. And we're going to continue to do it until we can't anymore. And, and that's what it's all about. We start out with bands we like. It's mostly it's the traditional heavy metal, like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. Black Sabbath, for example. Dio, Motorhead, Slayer. Dissection, Candlemas, for example, for, to name a few of them. Yeah. And when we start rehearsal portrait, when we started the band, we did some covers of so Running Wild. Yeah, we played a song Black Demon, I can remember, but we did. Uh, as a start, and that was around the same time when we wrote the first song, uh, Black Hole of Doom, also. So those two, Black Hole of Doom and Black Demon, I remember we rehearsed at the very first rehearsals. When we started out, we uh, we wanted to do dark heavy metal in the vein of uh, Merciful Fate, uh, Early Running Wild, and Storm Witch, and uh, Iron Maiden, and so on. So that is what we started up with. Um, well, my main influence, influences when it comes to music are, well, bands like Gotham City and Heavy Load, of course, and also bands like Kim Six, Tokyo Blade, the English uh, Tyrant, both of them actually. And uh, when it comes to lyrics, I'm sometimes influenced by video games such as Dark Souls or uh, Dungeons and Dragon games like Baldur's Gate and stuff. Iron Maiden. With Yannick Gears. <laughs> <laughs> the band Cauldron from Eastern Canada, we played one of our first shows with them. They had toured and come to LA 
um, Enforcer from Sweden. They were one of the first ones that we heard about. High Spirits from Chicago. And there was Midnight Chaser from San Francisco. I would say those were the ones that really stood out. Those are the ones that when we started trying to find a place to 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 market Night Demon or trying to find are there people around the world that, that would even care, that's when we discovered those bands and we felt, again, a big sense of relief. And we felt that they were great bands and they were doing exactly what we wanted to do. To us, we had no we had zero ambition that this was going to go anywhere. We were doing it purely for fun. Again, because we we knew nobody around us that that we didn't think anybody would care about what we were doing. We thought that we were playing music that was far outdated and it was only nostalgic to to us three individuals and that was it. But once we discovered that there were other bands out there doing it. And once we connected with them and put our music out into the ether, that's when the floodgates really opened. As far as other bands in the traditional heavy metal, uh, you know, canon here in the modern age, I mean, I didn't really know about any of them when I formed White Wizard. I literally did this just on my own here in L.A. I wasn't really paying attention. But once we started getting some recognition, I started to discover a lot of these bands, whether it was these great bands from Canada like Skullfist, Cauldron, Striker, um, or overseas like Enforcer, who, you know, I think they're great. And um, I really loved all of it. I think it's great. I think, you know, White Wizard, we have a lot of different influences. I've progressed the sound as we've gone. Our roots are definitely in traditional heavy metal, but we we bring a lot of influences as we've as we've moved forward. But we we definitely completely and totally appreciate all the other bands in the genre, and I think everybody brings something great to the table. And we'll continue to always um, draw off of the roots of traditional heavy metal and everything that we do, along with the other influences we draw off of, and that's what makes it great. And um, I think that. Uh, all these bands do a great job. I think they're awesome. We hope to tour with some in the future. And uh, we, we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. And I think that, uh, you know, all these bands are great. And again, it's all, you can tell everybody does it because they just love this music so much. And it's infectious. I think it makes its way into the music, the passion, the, uh, the depth of uh, love for it. And I think the fans feel that. And it's a great exchange. So uh, I'm totally stoked to be doing this kind of music, and I hope that all these bands keep going for a long time. In the 2000s, we maybe discovered bands like Ram and Wolf. They were old school metal, but new bands. So it was not uh, something old, but they played music that sound like in the 80s. Yeah, I remember when first uh, I met um the guys from Ram at Sweden Rock Festival in, I think it was 2001, I think. And uh, I was given this uh, promo CD with two or three songs. And uh, I was totally blown away by it. We listened to it at um, uh, camping grounds and uh, the song uh, Judgment and Punishment really uh, really got me going mad there. Uh, I had not heard a new band sounding in the vein of like Judas Priest and all the other godly bands. So uh, I was very happy, happy 16 year old boy uh, meeting uh, a band like that. So they have definitely been um, both good friends since then and uh, a source of inspiration also. But I think also that uh, around that time, the uh, year 2000, uh, when uh, Bruce Dickinson got back with Iron Maiden and uh, Hal Ford released Resurrection, I guess um, heavy metal became mainstream again on some level at least. And uh, I guess that opened up uh, for bands like us as well because people understood then that heavy metal did not belong to the past but it was it has ever it has been an ever ongoing force uh, also during the 90s but the only thing is that it was not mainstream 
during the 90s, but the bands still kept going on like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and Dio, Motorhead, Gravedigger, uh, Running Wild, Exciter, all those great bands still kept doing their thing in the 90s, but uh, things came up more to the surface uh, after the year 2000 and uh, I think that might have opened some road for us because there was some form of audience for us as well when we came with our shit <laughs> a couple of years <laughs> later you know so uh, yeah like the 90s was a time when people did not have any any sort of uh, style at all everything was jeans and t-shirts potatoes and sauce uh, no one had any I think that was maybe a, a reaction to the extra extravagant uh, styles of the 80s everything was uh, over the top and now everything was dull down. <laughs> yeah dulled down to barely nothing and uh, I think that's what it, that's that's why there weren't any uh, heavy metal bands basically in the 90s. There were bands that kept going, but there were generally the new, no new bands evolving, evolving. And that started in the 2000s, started to emerge bands that I think it was people of our generation that had listened to this type of music uh, in their teens and wanted to actually play it. And uh, yeah, I felt inspired when I first heard third, first bands doing it. I think it was... Which band was it first that you heard? Skybreaker, I think. Mm. An amazing band. Yeah. Uh, my initial reaction is pretty ironic. Because the first uh, traditional sounding heavy metal band was actually Helvete Spot. And uh, yeah, that was quite the experience. And uh, you have made my life so much better. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, well, uh, okay. I, I don't think I had heard any other uh, new band that played traditional heavy metal until I started Hell with its book. I'm sure there existed some. I know that there existed like a Japanese band called Magnesium like in the mid 90s who played a really old style of music that wasn't all out heavy metal like more kind of a mm, like uh, early new wave of British heavy metal like Mendes Prey kind of sound but yeah also yeah. Gorgon at the same time I think yeah <coughs> yeah so well uh, I don't know exactly when, I think it took a couple of years after forming Helvet Helvet Sport until I heard anyone else doing the same thing. So it, that was back when YouTube didn't exist and you had to like find such stuff on file sharing programs like Napster and stuff and I guess you weren't quite prone or likely to find any new bands playing traditional heavy metal that way. So I, I missed out on something I guess. So what does the bands think of the new wave of traditional heavy metal? Do they see themselves as part of a wave? And what do they think about the other bands that are involved in it? Um, my opinion is that I, I very double attitude towards the, the so-called new wave of traditional heavy metal. I'm, I understand that it's something that we, along with a few other bands in the early 2000s, was creating. But we didn't know that we were creating it back then. So I'm very proud of what we achieved back then and the bubble we had then. But of course, you know, when, when, when bands get some success, they will always be followers. And there are still a lot of great bands in there, but there's also like almost a majority of bands who have taken this revival of traditional metal almost to make too much parody, pastiche, cliche things of it. I think that 
the character or, or like it's so important for me at least is that bands have their own character and that they 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 preserve that and and not trying to imitate the old band because that's just going to come out like a, as a as like an imitation or almost parody so i don't know that the genre goes a little bit back and forward but i personally don't identify as new wave of traditional heavy metal but i'm also very proud that that's something that we created. Um, maybe you can see it a little bit like, like what Iron Maiden is to new wave of British heavy metal, for example. That's how I want to see it. I appreciate all of the bands from the new wave of traditional heavy metal scene. I think it's grown so much. You know, I'm I'm definitely honored to be a part of the first wave of it and one of the originators that that came out with it i know a lot of people have have put us in that category with a handful of bands and i'm just i'm really honored by that especially because when you think of loving a certain style of music and having it be your life and and your your lifestyle it's a, it's a part of who you are but feeling like you were born too late sometimes or you missed the bus, I felt like that a lot growing up. I felt I was always 10 or 15 years behind only to arrive at an age now and realize that I wasn't. I was in the, the right place at the right time all the time. I just had to go through those things in my life to get to a point where I knew that I could do it at a high level and do it the best I can. So looking back, uh, you know, Night Team has been around for 10 years now and to see the way that it's grown has been amazing. And we always said that we weren't a band that, you know, came to compete. We came to inspire. And that's exactly what we did. And we hit the the road harder than anybody. And, and bands really took to that and showed that we showed them that it was possible to do. And a lot of other bands did too. I'm not taking full credit that, that we did, but um, I definitely think we were the most vocal about it and we were very hardcore out there. Every interview we ever did, you know, when people would say, what are your parting, parting words? We would just inspire everybody that was reading that to, you know, where there was no scene, you have to create one. And, and we found ourselves doing that a lot, going to towns where there was no scene. And the next time we would come around, there'd be a handful of heavy metal bands would be a crop of new heavy metal bands that we would have to play with because they they were inspired by what we were doing and we would keep coming back around again and again and before you know it there a, a movement starts and so now there are hundreds hundreds of bands in the new wave of traditional heavy metal and there's room for all of them and for all of us and a lot of us have gone on to experience great things a lot of success and it's just great for all the other bands they say you know when the tide rises that all boats float higher and i fully believe that that's the case happening here with the new wave of traditional heavy metal you know what it's not about traditional metal at all at all you know we play a certain style but i know a ton of fucking bands that play metal and it's, it's all it's it doesn't matter about fucking sub genres man you know what i mean like it's all part about the new wave fucking movement it's all, well, it's that, all about the yeah, it's all I'll about do, the metal movement and the yeah, metal movement yeah. also consists about other fucking bands besides heavy fucking well, metal you, 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 fuck you, heavy metal think, think of the new wave of british, uh, british heavy metal movement that wasn't just oh, tokyo blade our oh, main the, the other bands like venom were involved in that movement so it was a movement, it was a wave of bands that were coming out that just described the sound at the time, or their sound. Yeah. But that's what the new wave of traditional heavy metal movement has to be understood as as, as well. This is, isn't a genre. This is a group of people that play very similar music, but from a completely different angle. In my opinion, I don't think that Riot City sounds like Enforcer or Skullfist, but at the same time, I don't think Skullfist sounds like Enforcer or Vice Versa or Seven Sisters or any one of those bands. We all have our own different takes on how this movement, sh the direction of this movement. We write our own book. Yeah. We write our own book, and it doesn't matter 
you know, if you guys, if this documentary wants to put it in to a fucking category where you're talking about one fucking movement, listen, man, I know fucking hundreds of bands that fucking don't get the fucking recognition. They should be in this fucking documentary, too. We got Chrome. We got fucking Martial Law Blazes here right fucking now. Look at him right fucking now. Martial Law fucking kicks ass. Dude, we got Gay Crasher. We got fucking... You know, we got Black Rat. Everybody fucking rules, man. Everybody fucking rules. And if you don't fucking like it, you're just a fucking idiot. And you listen to Man of War only. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I listen you to listen to Man of War only. Hey, Blaze. Blaze, get in this fucking shit. Yo, get in here. This is Blaze from Martial Law, man. I played in a band with him called Rotten Crutch as well. This guy fucking rules, man. I hate him half the fucking time. I like to call him Rotten Crush. You know, I fucking hate him. I hate him half the time, but I fucking love him too. He's a good fucking dude, man. Fucking highest fucking shrill cry fucking vocals you ever hear in your fucking life. And it's a shame that half the fucking world hasn't fucking hear, heard it yet. Get the fuck out of my interview. <laughs> Our relationships with the other bands and the new wave of traditional heavy metal are very strong. There's very few bands that we actually don't know personally. It's great that new bands are popping up all the time, but it's only a matter of time before we're going to meet each other. This is a big difference of how things used to work back in the day. Back in the 80s, back in the 70s, there was so much competition between bands. It was, I think it was actually pretty unhealthy, to be honest. You heard about all kinds of stuff, bands sabotaging each other on tours and on stage. And it's just completely ridiculous. When you talk about the new wave of British heavy metal, you know, I've I've talked to these guys personally. I've got to meet most of my heroes from that scene. I've played shows with them. I've played in some of those bands, which has been awesome. And one of the things that I always ask them is, you know, what was it like back then? What was the camaraderie like? And they all tell me the same thing. It's pretty much non-existent. A lot of these bands didn't even know each other. Many of them didn't even ever play gigs together. And it was a thing that the press was writing about and lumping all of these bands into this scene that they dubbed the new wave of British heavy metal. And these guys had no idea who each other were. A lot of them didn't even have each other's records. So, and I... At the time, you know, a lot of this was happening in, in England. And, you know, when you think about it, it's England is such a small country compared to how large the rest of the world is. So on that scope, that really got me thinking. And there are so many bands that I could name in this scene and the new wave of traditional heavy metal. We have played together in so many countries and different continents and around the world and states in the United States. We've played on many festivals together. We've all toured together, slept on each other's floors when we come through town. The camaraderie is insane. And that is one thing, that is one reason why I'm glad for the advancement of technology and the internet. We've all been able to connect in one way or another. And it's great. We have a global community here. And again, it doesn't matter how popular this scene is in the mainstream. It's not something that any of us are looking for. When when one of us breaks out, it it's awesome and we cheer each other on and it does help because we don't change. You know, if we're on the radio between sandwich between two bands that are in a very popular but we think shitty subgenre of metal, that's, we're waving the flag for the new wave of traditional heavy metal. There is never a bad time for somebody to get into good music. You know, it took me a long time to be exposed to things because I was sheltered in the suburbs of Southern California, you know, and it's fine. It doesn't matter. We're happy to expose what we do to the masses because we feel that it's that good and we think that all the bands in this scene it's undeniable the energy and the passion that we bring and when you hear it it just does something to you i think that many bands uh, who started out around the same time uh, have developed uh, in a good way uh, and that is the the important thing 
that uh, whatever it starts up as can grow into something of its own, like an own entity that has its own character and uniqueness. And um, that we can see, we can see the same thing in all of the past uh, so-called waves uh, that's been going on in metal ever since the 80s with the new wave of British heavy metal, which had some bands that released like one good single and also had Maiden that has done like 16 or 17 great albums by now. And What's your opinion on the Nuotum? I think it's great really because uh, if you rewind the tape 15 years it was like you had literally no bands, very very few fans. It was a very male dominated uh, type of ordeal but uh, now you know it's it's great that it's reaching out to more people and a lot more you get a lot, a lot of new and younger fans coming into the uh, to the mix and and I know there are the type of people that think that no I want to have my heavy metal for myself but if you're playing a band you're shooting yourself in the foot really because I mean come on I mean it's fucking great man yeah yeah, yeah. you want the opportunities yeah. and uh, it comes with it and uh, if you love the music then it's great yeah. Um, yeah I feel a bit sorry for like all the other styles that you have seen like when you grew up punks and like uh, most other like styles that are both like a music genre and a way of dressing like most of them are kind of gone but uh, heavy metal still stands strong and uh, that's uh, something I really appreciate uh, there is of course some kind of a glass ceiling for playing classic heavy metal but we're still uh, like much better off than many other genres and we, it feels like we are inclined to promote at least one other new band than ourselves. So, Seven Sisters from the UK. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Shit band, no fans. <laughs> I miss you, Graham. <laughs> there is always going to be critics. People who think that classic metal belongs in the 80s. That the new bands are just playing dress up and just copying what was popular back in the 80s. And that there is a culture of elitism surrounding the bands that play a more traditional style of heavy metal. So, let's see what the bands has to say about it. I think that... I mean, I'm sort of an elitist myself. So I can't blame other people, but I mean, for, for, for judging new bands. Um, so perhaps I'm not like the right person to ask about this, but I think that good music should always be incentered, whether it's old or new, it shouldn't really like make any difference. But what I can, what I can think is that, that so many people have like an opinion on, that they're, they're kind of not listening to music for the music, but more for, 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 for to show other people what is cool and not to listen to and, and try to really fit in there. And that's where you have most of the heavy metal elitist. I think it's just go to the music. Good music is always good music, whether it's new or old. And you don't have to listen to music to show off that you're cool with some cool records or some cool bands that nobody else is listening to. I mean, the, the, the music must be in centered. And as long as there are good music produced, I think that you should... I mean, you should support the bands that simply are good. I, I don't think the genre will die. I mean, uh, the fact that it was, uh, you know, if it was around 40 years ago and it's still around now, um, then it's, it's probably not going anywhere, right? I mean, uh, I think as long as there are fans out there for this uh, style of music, then it will never go away. And uh, I don't think it will. I mean, uh, you know... Uh, Jeans and leather are, are still in, and uh, yeah, heavy metal is for life. It ain't going nowhere. My message to people who think that the new wave of traditional heavy metal is for elitists is, yes, it is, and um, you cannot join. No, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't really subscribe to the elitist attitude at all. I think a lot, I think every scene has some form of that. 
And usually that comes from the people that are not doing it. That comes from people that are in the scene that are merely bystanders that are that feel inferior or have some sense of low self-esteem probably because they don't have the courage to be in a band themselves you never see it from the bands because once once guys from a band start acting that way nobody wants to be around them and the other bands don't want to play with them so fortunately we don't have a lot of that in our scene and any again any of it that we do comes from a face in the crowd or comes from a keyboard warrior on social media who feels that their opinion is valid but you know i think the best thing to do is if you don't like a band don't talk about them that's it don't even give them the attention at all but there's there's no point in in going out there and just dogging somebody because you don't like it not everything is for everybody but somebody out there likes it and you it's not it's not fair for you to take away somebody else's hard work just because you feel that your opinion needs to be heard. So as far as who traditional heavy metal is for or whether or not elitists think it's cool or not, um, I think it's kind of irrelevant. I, you know, yeah, it's an older genre, I guess. It depends on how you want to label it. But I think it's come full circle. I think a lot of the bands from back in the day are more popular than they've ever been. I think the genre is more popular than it's ever been. And uh, I feel like there's just another resurgence happening of this type of music. I think it's timeless. I, I don't think it can be married to a particular uh, time era. So, you know, wh whether it's the type of clothing people wear or, um, or want to present the look of the bands, whether or not they evoke a time in the past, um, I still think it's relevant now. And I think that all the bands that are doing it now have their own stamp to put on it. And I think that it will continue on forever. I think this music is timeless. I think that uh, that's the beauty of music. In a lot of ways, I'm a musical spiritualist. It's the only religion I have. Um, and that's the purest uh, communication there is in the universe as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, it's, it's a big part of my life. Um, I think it's a big part of all of our lives. And I think it's, it's just, it's not contrived. It's pure truth. We all love it. And uh, who cares what elitists think or, you know, anyone else thinks. If you love it and you're into it, then there's nothing more metal than putting your finger in the air and saying, this is my genre. I love it. This is the music I like. And that's with any music, you know, just whatever you like in life, whatever your passions are, whatever you believe in, um, do it unequivocally and don't give a fucking shit what anybody thinks because that's what it's all about and that's what this genre is about as well that's the exclamation point of it is saying you know what we don't care what you think we're going to do what we love i don't care what you think i'm going to be who i want to be i'm going to do what i want to do and uh fuck you if you've got a problem with it i don't think it's fucked up to like do any kind of music that you want to do like you don't owe anybody anything like so for someone to be like, hey, you should stop doing that like thing you like doing because it was popular in the 80s. It's like so bizarre. It's like it's from this like uh, this lens of music. You're only in music because you want to be successful and make money. And it's like, well, that's not why anybody's in music for the most part. Like if you want to make money, like go get a real job, you know. So I think it's. It's a weird lens that you, people look at music through where they're like, if you're not doing it to be successful, why are you doing it? It's like, well, you, you like playing tennis and you suck ass at it. So, but it's like, well, if you're not going to go pro, maybe you should stop playing fucking tennis. Like, I don't know. <laughs> that seems fucked up. You know, George Carlin famously said in an interview once, he said, you can accomplish a lot in life when you don't give a shit. And, you know, I think what that really means is you can ac accomplish a lot in life when you don't care what anybody thinks, when you just stay true to your vision, true to your passion, and you don't give a shit what anybody's going to say. You don't care what the critics say. I think that's what's beautiful about this genre, too, is all these bands, they're just doing it because they love it. Come what may, you're going to either like it or you're not, but we're not going to change because some Somebody doesn't like it we're not affected by what people think we just follow our passion and our love for the music and uh 
I think that uh, traditional heavy metal and heavy metal in, in general, and just the spirit that it evokes will be around forever. And uh, I'm really thrilled to be a part of it. I really respect all the different bands that are uh, doing it. And uh, we can't wait to continue to, to roll forward and make more music and uh, be a part of the wave, man. To say that an art form isn't relevant, that's irre irrelevant. Yeah, well, uh, and as for elitism, well, I I don't really come across it myself, but then again, I might not have the interpre interpretative <laughs> prerogative, <laughs> as they say. But uh, I don't think that any possible elitism would be like a barrier for people to get into this kind of music, because I think that simply discovering it and figuring out what it's all about, that should be the first step. And then they might discover some people are elitist and then they can just ignore them or do whatever. But the most important thing is to know what classic heavy, me heavy metal is all about and start listening to it, damn it. And also, uh, as for being relevant, I mean, a few years ago or like 10 years ago when you were at a show, you might be kind of disappointed in what old bands chose to play. But I have noticed more and more over the past few years that when an old band with a varied discography plays live, they kind of have figured out what really counts. So they don't play their 1987 album when they were led astray on the path of commercialism and they don't play their 1999 comeback album with the Matrix cover art, they play their 1983 debut album. And to be honest, was it ever really relevant from the beginning? Oof. Oof. <laughs> Edgy. <laughs> 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 to uh, quote uh, Der Kennedys, Heavy metal elitists, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I have a message. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs>